It's said that a hero is only as good as his villains, but I think that expression can be disproved when looking at Batman Beyond. While the original Batman has probably the best rogues gallery in all comics, the Batman of Tomorrow, Terry McGuinness's rogues gallery, are fairly straightforward. When thinking about his villains, I honestly really struggled to determine who his main antagonist was. With the original Batman, it's clearly the Joker. With the X-Men, probably Magneto. With the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom. But Batman Beyond? Hmm. Now he has a number of villains with striking visual designs and compelling backstories, but the majority of them only make a handful of appearances and as such they don't really feel like they make a huge impact. There is one villain that was very significant in the origins of the new Batman and prominently featured for the first season and that is Derek Powers, also known as Blight. Derek Powers was an original creation for this show, although he does take on some inspiration from other comic book characters, but I'll get to that later on. When we first see him in the show, he's presented as an industrialist whose company takes over Wayne Enterprises in the far-flung future. As with any corporate merger, changes are made in the senior management, putting Powers at the head of the new Wayne Powers Corporation, while an older Bruce Wayne steps back from public life. Flash forward about 20 years and Powers is still in charge of the company, but he has taken it down a more sinister path. Powers scientists have developed chemical weapons that they are illegally selling to foreign nations to use in their wars. This chemical agent in particular causes the degradation of flesh and could destroy all living creatures it comes into contact with, while leaving buildings and infrastructure intact. Wayne Powers' employee, Warren McGuinness, is made aware of these crimes and, for fear that he might blow the whistle, Powers orders his right-hand man, the aptly named Mr. Fix, to deal with him. Fix would murder Warren and make it seem like a robbery gone wrong. Unbeknownst to Powers, Warren's son Terry has met the now elderly Bruce Wayne and discovered his secret, that he was Batman. When clearing out his father's things, Terry discovers the evidence his father had been gathering and takes it to old man Wayne. While Wayne is outraged that his company is being used in such a way, he refuses to get directly involved, instead directing Terry to take the evidence to the police. However, when Powers confronts Terry and almost kills him, Terry decides to take matters into his own hands and steals the Batman costume and heads out to apprehend Powers himself. Along the way, Powers is exposed to the chemical weapons he had been selling, and in order to save his life he is treated with high doses of radiation. While this does save his life there is an unfortunate side effect. He has been turned into a glowing radioactive monster. Seeing his own reflection drives Powers mad. The DC Animated Universe has a long history of being critical of capitalism. Just look at characters like Roland Daggett, Ferris Boyle and Daniel Mockridge, whose pursuit of money and power destroyed people's lives and created a litany of supervillains along the way. And of course there's Lex Luthor. Powers is another in this fold of ultra-capitalists that does immoral things in the pursuit of wealth. Although in this case he is literal poison. After his transformation his body emits radiation that would be toxic if not for the fake skin that he wears. Although the skin has a limited shelf life and becomes less effective over time as his powers grow. It's funny because we never see Powers' life outside of work. He is always at the office, at all times of day, working on some sort of shady deal. He is pursuing more wealth and more power just for the sake of having it, not for any real purpose, just to have it. Powers is a very on-the-nose criticism of capitalism. He's pure poison and he gobbles up wealth and power no matter the human cost for no real reason. When he can't get his way he resorts to criminality, hiring assassins like Ink or Shriek to do his dirty work for him. Ink sabotages rival companies while Shriek attempts to assassinate Bruce Wayne when he becomes more involved in the running of Wayne Powers. We know that he has a son, Paxton, who is also pretty corrupt and as such was banished to a South American branch of Wayne Powers until the heat died down. However, Derek shows little affection towards Paxton, and that's probably the roots of Paxton's own villainy. His father never cared for or loved him. He would instead berate Paxton and push him away. So it's no wonder that Paxton would become a treacherous, pathetic wretch. Powers would spend much of season one trying to avoid being Blight. However, in the episode Ascension, when his condition becomes too much, he initiates a contingency plan retiring from the public eye and using Paxton as a puppet CEO that he could control from behind the scenes. However, the toxic apple didn't fall very far from the radioactive tree, so to speak. Paxton betrays his father, setting up a protest that would enrage Powers, causing him to go into meltdown on live TV. With his father's secret exposed, Paxton could then take control of Wayne Powers without his father's influence. However, rather than settling for just disgracing his father, Paxton decided it would be better to kill him. He aims to achieve this by teaming up with Batman under the pretense that they'll use an energy siphoning machine to drain his energy to subdue him. 
there's a really great scene in which Batman finally gets some one-on-one -on -one time with Blight and explains to him that the reason he can't let him go is because he made him become Batman by killing his father. Blight's reaction to this is just priceless. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? This really underscores just how villainous Powers was, even before he became Blight. He is responsible for so much death and destruction that he probably stopped keeping track. It's hard to believe that there was ever a time where he would have been troubled by murder, and his descent into insanity as Blight has made him even worse. At this point, Batman springs the trap and signals to Paxton that now's the time to bring Blight in. And shocking no one at all except for Batman, Paxton informs his father that he intends to drain all of his strength and kill him. Unsurprisingly, this does not go well. Paxton is a coddled, ineffective moron, and as such his plan to kill his father goes disastrously wrong. Blight easily escapes, but only because he's gone into complete meltdown. The end result of this is Blight's death. He might be a glowing skeleton, a symbol of nuclear death, but he still needs to eat and presumably breathe, and there's no way he could have escaped from that ship. And that's the last we see of Blight in Batman Beyond. He does resurface in some of the later Batman Beyond comics, but these comics are not considered part of the same continuity as the animated series, and as such they're fairly easy to disregard. Honestly, I read them once, didn't care for them, and have put them to the back of my mind. So I previously mentioned that Powers was an original creation for the most part, but his alternate identity Blight was very clearly inspired by Dr. Phosphorus, a 1970s Batman villain. Having said that, Blight is distinct enough from Dr. Phosphorus that he can be considered an entirely separate villain. Dr. Phosphorus was a wealthy businessman named Alex Sartorius. He was convinced to invest in a nuclear plant just outside of Gotham by corrupt councilman Rupert Thorne. However, the plant was built with shoddy materials and a small meltdown occurred, bathing Sartorius in nuclear chemicals that transformed him into the deranged Dr. Phosphorus. Dr. Phosphorus would seek revenge on those he blamed for his condition, the corrupt tobacconist club members that encouraged him to invest in the plant, which would bring him into contact with Batman. He would also attempt to poison Gotham City's water supply in his quest for revenge. Batman would defeat Phosphorus multiple times thanks to his knowledge of chemistry, but he would have the distinction of being the cause of the cancer that would eventually kill Batman in his old age, at least according to Tom King's Batman comics. Outside of their glowing nuclear skin and complete derangement, those are the only similarities between Dr. Phosphorus and Blight which is why I feel they're distinct enough characters. And I have to say that the idea of Derek Powers strongly resembles Norman Osborn in the Spider-Man comics. He was another titan of industry that, through the pursuit of wealth and power, would be exposed to a chemical that would turn him into a deranged villain with a green costume. Given the similarities to Terry McGuinness and Peter Parker, the comparison to the Green Goblin is hard to avoid. So after his meltdown in Ascension, Derek Powers and Blight never returned in Batman Beyond. The man that had killed Terry's father would be exposed as the villainous, toxic monstrosity that he was, even before he was transformed into Blight. He lost everything, his power, his money, his position in society, and ultimately his life. And Paxton wouldn't be able to hold on to power for too long, with the company eventually returning to Bruce Wayne's control. It is kind of funny that although Terry set out to bring Powers to justice, Powers brought about his own downfall through his own failings as a father coming home to roost. It's ironic that Powers killed Terry's father, but it would be his own son that ended his life. I'm pretty certain there's something Freudian to highlight there, but I'm damned if I know what it is. Okay, that's the end of this week's essay, which I wrote as part of my ongoing celebrations of Batman Beyond's 25th anniversary. Oh my god, we're all getting old, aren't we? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video, tell all your friends about me, because it really helps. Another great way to help me out would be to make use of the thanks button. You can donate a buck or two to help me maintain the quality of these videos. Every little helps. Likewise, I offer channel memberships for $1.99 a month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, sporadic members-only videos, priority responses to your comments, an icon in your profile indicating that you're one of my members, and custom emojis. I'm going to come back next week with another video looking at how Batman Beyond was inspired by characters featured in Marvel Comics. Hope to see you then.